Thank you very much, sir, for making us wise about this topic. My next speaker is Professor Fawad Farooq, and uh, he will be talking on can hypertension be defined by number? Thank you to the organizers for providing this opportunity to talk on this very important subject. This is just an introductory slide. That's an introduction of my YouTube channel and page. You can find a lot of public awareness and academic videos on that. We're going to cover can we, can blood pressure be slightly, P is missing I think, be defined by a number, historical perspective. A common misbelief among primary care physician and a number of times we also think that just one reading is enough to define a person hypertensive or normotensive. That's not ideally the case and that's the thing we're going to cover. I'm just dedicating my talk to the Professor Makbul Jafri late. He's a great personality of cardiology. I started my career with him as a scientific committee member in PHL 8, 15 years back. So I'm dedicating to him a great personality. Now definition of hypertension, we all know it's simple. The blood pressure beyond a certain limit. And what is blood pressure force exerted on the vesicle vessels by the contraction of heart and it's a com component of combination of cardiac output and peripheral resistance. But still we are unable to define exact limit. Beyond that is hypertension and below this is normotensive. We are still in a, a lot of gray areas, pre-hypertensive, high normal, a lot. And why is it so in relation to historical perspective we'll go through? A very complex pathophysiology. A lot of intrinsic and extrinsic influences beat to beat variability of blood pressure due to these influences. So it's not easy to pick your right baseline blood pressure. That's the key to understand. People are knowing about this disease for centuries, hardening of arteries, relation to some events, but unable to really form what it is. It's only when uh, this Russian uh, surgeon devised a technique of measuring blood pressure externally. Then people come to know that blood pressure is there. But what happened initially, if you look on to 1930s, people were thinking that you don't have to touch blood pressure. It's natural compensatory response. Even this J.H. Hay said that the greatest dangers to a man with high blood pressure lies in its discovery because then some fool is certain to try and reduce it. So they don't want reduction of blood pressure at that time. In 1940s, slight, like 200, 100 was considered at mild hypertensive. Below that was all normal. And that's why I'm just correlating uh, historical personalities here. They were discussed previously, but just one. There are three personalities here. That's a Yatta conference, 1945, Second World War. And they have one thing similar among them. Anybody knows about them? Can anybody guess who they are? One is Roosevelt, there is Stalin and Churchill. These three great personalities and they all died of stroke. Untreated hypertension, that's the common between them. So in 40s even these personalities aren't treated for hypertension because people were considering that blood pressure beyond 200 should be treated. Then people come to know, yes, you can treat those who are having something like chest pain or exertional angina. They correlated with blood pressure, so they started treating those patients who have symptoms with high blood pressure. Not every patient with high blood pressure. And at that moment, the drugs were so intolerable, these drugs. Nobody can tolerate them for a week or so. So people aren't taking these drugs regularly. Then they found uh, a relation between hypertension. Up till now, they were just considering blood pressure as a compensatory response. But in 60s, when this blood pressure measurements were there, insurance companies were jumping in, and they found clear relation between high blood pressure and stroke, MI, CHF, and kidney damage. And then this 
postulate was validated by different studies. Uh, uh, these were uh, Framingham. So then they come to know that this is something which need to be treated. And from 70 to 23 till today, we are struck still upcoming evidences always keep on questioning the existing evidences. And we are progressively lowering or sometimes then bringing back the thresholds of treatments because of changing evidences. And we are still unclear when to treat, where to treat, and which patient needs treatment at which stage of the disease, how the blood pressure can vary, variably uh, appear. Like in GNC7, you see we said that blood pressure less than 120 and less than 80 is normal, and pre-hypertension was 120 to 139. Subsequently, GNC8 considered no, they are very low thresholds. You just have to make thresholds for treatment. So just 140, 80, 90 for complicated and 150, 90 for uncomplicated. Then this sprint trial again questioned this GNC8. No, we have to bring pressure less than 120 and less than 80 to every person to get maximum benefit. But this result, there were some adverse event do occur with the lower target group, especially old age patients. And these were without diabetes. So that again bring us to certain changes in our like, latest guidelines. I'm just displaying for you people. This is 2017 guideline and this is ISH. Almost similar kind of numbers, but what you see again, we are naming it differently. Normal, less than 130 and less than 85. High normal, grade one, grade two, slightly change in numberings, not exact fixed number to everyone. Here, again, normal less than 120 and less than 80. Elevated, now they are considering it to be high normal, they are labeling it elevated. And then stage one and stage two. But if we conclude, I'm not trying to make you confuse about it. If we really trying to make a goal for management strategy or therapeutic thresholds, a thresholds for drug treatment, that is almost clear. Like if you are dealing a complicated hypertensive, it should be less than 130, 80. And if it's uncomplicated, without risk factor, a simple hypertensive, it should be less than 140 by 80. But even in different authorities and guidelines, you see different features along with patient can make your targets different. Let's see hypertensive uncomplicated, less than 140. Diabetic, less than 130, 80. This diabetic developed renal diseases, less than 130, 80. With protein urea, less than 145, 75. So changing threshold. I'm coming to my point. It's not just one number which can define hypertension hypertension. You have to look to your patient, his characteristics, and then define what target should be set for your patient. That's the point I want to make. Similarly, if you have a high risk patient with constellation of different risk factor, target is less than 130-80. Now I'm bringing you even the latest guideline telling you some high targets as well. What are those? If you are dealing a patient who's for the first time have blood pressure more than 140, 90, don't start drug treatment straight away. You have liberty to validate next 6 to 12 week on conservative measure. So here, in spite of 140, 80, you're not treating your patient because your patient is low risk. You're validating by different means, trying your conservative measure for next 6 to 12 week to see whether these bring this patient's uh, blood pressure below less than 140, 90. Similarly, old age patients, it's not, if they are low risk, don't go so aggressive. Sometimes autonomic neuropathies, rather than giving benefit, you may harm them. And a lot of latest guidelines considering this phenomena that old age patients shouldn't be treated very strictly. Similarly, Pregnancy-related hypertension, there's no strict number for that. If what kind of pregnancy-induced hypertension you're dealing with? Pronic pre-existing, gestational, even in both conditions, don't bring pressure to, to lower levels. If it's clear-cut 
pregnancy induced weight even without symptom you can wait up to 150 90 you don't have to treat the patient so patient characteristics are important blood pressure numbers are not important similarly if you're dealing a patient with stroke a same hypertensive high risk patient now has developed a stroke a new condition to have appeared don't bring the patients down below 200 you have to keep his systolic blood pressure 200 to 220 in initial phase of disease otherwise it will be it will going to harm your patient so again the point it's not number it's patient his characteristics his status his stage of disease where you are dealing this patient that's very important then one important point i want to add on along with this which is blood pressure measurements very important to take exact blood pressure it's not jaisa bhi baitha hua hai patient jaisa bhi khada hua hai jis bhi andaaz se hai jo bhi instrument aapne laga diya same patient can have different blood pressure just measurement technique makes a lot of difference in your patient so it's very important and where are you measuring this pressure this is also important clinic home 24 hour and that's why we are doing all these because we found a lot of variability in pressures of same person in these different stages normal ghar pe hota hai to clinic mein bada hua hota hai clinic mein normal hota hai to ghar pe pada hota hai and when we validated it with 24 hour ambulatory blood pressure monitoring we found this variability white coat masks dipper non dipper so we have discussed all these things so i'm not going into detail just want to clarify that it's not just single number that's the my key point the whole crux of this whole discussion don't believe in just one number in defining your hypertension you have to assess properly you have to take blood pressure properly you have to make consideration regarding your patient is this blood pressure a real blood pressure without any external or internal influences then you need validation multiple readings 24 hour monitoring and then finally decide about both for diagnosing for up titrating for down titrating not just one number very important in relation to blood pressure treatment so in conclusion i would say that hypertension is not a disease that can simply be defined on blood pressure values taken on single visit that's the message i want to convey with all this discussion it is a progressive complex cardiovascular syndrome affecting various target organ even without sustained increase in blood pressure in high risk patients so you have to assess your patient risk that's very important to treat to manage with that, I thank you all for your patience listening.